The Big Cheese at Barstool Sports. And Dave, my first question, first of all, happy Sunday. Second of all, what's more difficult? Is it more difficult to bet on sports or is it more difficult to day trade? Jeez, I, you know, I have a long history of being terrible at both of them. Uh, I, I think it's harder to bet on sports because when the game's over, you lose, at least so far in the stock market. While I am getting uh, my butt kicked, the clock hasn't struck triple zero. I never feel like the game's over. How are you hanging in? Because obviously we follow your stuff and you're sort of stuck inside and the hair's poofy and you're doing the pizza reviews. I just put, I just put gel in the hair. I mean, come on. Oh, generally speaking, I, you can't fool me with the gel stuff. I know you're not out getting haircuts, so it's still a little bit poofy. But how are you hanging in there, basically? Yeah, you know, it, it actually weirdly feels like early Barstow. When I started Barstow, I never left my uh, apartment. I was in Lower Mills in Dorchester forever. Um, and I was, you know, living in my in-laws. But when I started, I just I was on the Internet all day. That's all I did. That's what it feels like all over again. All right. I see the shirt that you're wearing. It looks a little bit like NASCAR. We saw the return to racing today. I'm interested, honestly. How has your uh, interest in NASCAR affected your business? Because it seems as though when you went in, there was a whole new audience that you hit. Yeah, you know, and we were so our the, the backstory in that is sales. Um, did a deal where they sent me to the Daytona 500. And they actually sent me without telling me. They're like, hey, Dave, we expect you to do a live show at Daytona. I didn't know the first thing about NASCAR. I had never been. I grew up, obviously, in Boston, not the biggest NASCAR market. And I fell in love with it. I really did. I had a great time, and I jumped with both feet into it. I met all the drivers. I met all the people. I love it. So it did introduce us to a new crowd. Um, but I was also surprised, and I don't want to call them rednecks, but a lot of them are rednecks, we go down there, and they love Barstool. So they welcomed me with open arms. It's been a very good relationship for both sides. The number one reason that we wanted to have you on tonight was because of what has transpired with you bidding on this opportunity to spend a Monday night football game at Roger Goodell's house. So I want to cover it. So let's talk about your, your interest in doing it, your motivation to do it, how hard it was to bid. Did anyone press you for it? Was it a hard thing to win? Did you, did you, did you run away with it? And then what's the ultimate goal here? Yeah, so those people are familiar with Barcel and familiar with me know I hate Roger Goodell and Roger Goodell hates me. Uh, you know, I've been put in handcuffs now twice at the hands of Roger Goodell, one at the Super Bowl when they dragged him on his seats and one when he protested at Deflategate. So we have this long rivalry, and I saw when he said uh, during the draft that they're going to do this auction. Right then, I'm like, oh, I'm going to bid on this and see what happens. So I had the highest bid. I, I, I ended up spending 200 I actually have this right next to me right now, um, $250,000 to win this. I haven't gotten it confirmed yet from the NFL outside the standard, hey, congrats, you won this contest. They, I've already paid for it. But I want to sit and I want to ask him all the tough questions that Patriots fans have always asked. And I know this was a long time ago, but this guy has lied for a living, not only about the plate gate, bounty gate, the way he handled Ray Rice, and he's never been asked a tough question. So I'd love to ask it. As far as the contest, I've heard Marlins man, the guy who dresses in all Marlins yeah. guy, that's who I was bidding against. That's what I've heard. Um, and the way they set it up. So I paid 250000 I also had a bid in for 325000 mm. but once you hit the high number, it doesn't charge you the extra. So Marlins man pretty much bid $250,000 as well. Got it. So what do you anticipate happens next? Who's going to call you from the NFL? Somebody's going to call me from the NFL, I believe, and say, hey, Dave, you're disqualified. There is a disclaimer that says they can get rid of you for any reason. And a lot of people, including myself, have said if Roger Goodell – had an ounce of you know awareness or humility, he could play this into a win. Because whether he likes us or not, we're a big enough media organization he could have a laugh and make fun of himself and be deprecating. But I don't think he's going to do that. He's never shown any ability to do that with us. In a ridiculous situation, has become more ridiculous over the years. So I think I'm going to get a call and say uh, your money's not good here, and I'll get refunded. In the second place winner, if it was Marlins, man will be the guy who gets to do it. I, that's my guess. I don't know, though. Now, you live in open book, and I'm sure you want this to be an open book. You want to go in there with cameras rolling and guns blazing. But if he said, listen, you can come, you can watch, no cameras, no recorders, just you and me in the room for four hours, would you do it? 
I would say yes, and then I would show up with cameras, and when they try to take the cameras away, we'd have another incident that would go viral of me getting wrestled to the ground trying to break. I mean, what are they going to take my phone? What is this, the flake it? They're like Brady's phone? I mean, how can you take a man's phone? You can't. <laughs> All right, so Brady's now a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. First of all, I wish you luck with that. Whatever happens, you know everyone's going to be watching, so we'll be crossing our yeah. fingers, and it would be great if it does happen. So Brady has now moved down to Florida. We know you have the allegiance with Brady. You have the allegiance with the Patriots. What wins out in 2020? Uh, I'm a Patriots fan. I mean, Patriots first and foremost. The best-case scenario, a uh, Super Bowl is in Tampa, so the Patriots meet the Bucs in Tampa for the Super Bowl. That would be great. But I'm, I'm a Patriot fan, no doubt about it. Um, I, if we play the Patriots, I, want, I mean, if we play the Bucs, I want to kill them. I am, it's Patriots, 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 Patriots. The Bucs are my second favorite team, but there's no, there's no mix up who I'm rooting for if those two teams play. What do you think of Stidham? We haven't seen much of him. Do you have, are you a believer? I, I, you know, I haven't seen him play, but I, everything I hear is that they really like him. And I'll say this. Outside of Brady, I mean, they had a great year with Castle. Um, you know, the, the quarterback, uh, for the Colts, he's been pretty good. Um, obviously, Garoppolo. So they've had other quarterbacks. So my, I have high hopes. Okay, going off the grid here, just because I'm personally curious. I've never had the chance to ask you this. You do pizza reviews all the time. How many have you done, roughly? Oh, God, probably six or 700. Is there one or two that stand out to you as your all-time favorite, whether it be for entertainment purposes or for pizza quality purposes? What, what's on top of the list? Sally's for quality pizza. I love it. Sally's New Haven, Connecticut, best pizza I've ever had. I obviously love Regina. I love Santarpio's, the two everyone loves in Boston. As far as entertainment, there's a famous one, Joe and Pat's, where like in the span of maybe 10 seconds, 18 different characters came. A guy who was bleeding all over his face, uh, a guy who served in World War II veteran, two guys who had terrible service. And it was just one character after another. That's probably the most famous you know, weird one. Quality, though, Sally's in New Haven, unbelievable. And then, you know, you do so much, you dip your toes in so many different pools. You suddenly were a, a social media starlet in a different arena this week because of your thoughts on, you know, we're not finding a cure, we're trying to flatten the curve. Were you surprised at how much that took off? You know, we're not overly political. I was in a bad mood. Like, I lost a lot of money in the stock market, so I ranted. And, you know, I've heard people be like, you know, this guy who don't know me, that it'll be like Dave Portnoy is yelling and screaming and ranting. For the way that I talk and what we do at Barcel is kind of pretty even keeled. So anything with politics goes nuts. Um, people are crazy on both sides. You know, I did a rant the week before that I said you should wear masks. And the opposite end of the spectrum was killing me. So it seems like anything with politics goes absolutely ballistic. I, I am a little surprised. I felt like a TikTok star. I mean, it just went crazy viral, like a 15-year-old girl dancing. That's how many views it had. I should not be surprised you found ways to keep us entertained through this period. So for that, I say thank you. And also thank you for thank joining you. us tonight. <laughs> Thanks for having me. All right, good to see you.